All right, guys, welcome to the Rumblecast. We are, man, we've done so many episodes now. We're, we're, we're going to keep it rolling, though, guys. We want to keep making sure we're discussing Warcraft Rumble. And I think, like, the devs watch this, the community watches this. It's a great way for everyone to kind of, like, bring their opinions together. Uh, if you haven't caught uh, episode one, please go and watch that on Big Math's channel. I'll put the links to Big Math's channel in the description below, in including a direct link to the video. We did a Chimera roundup. We did a little kind of, like, looking forward to what's next for Warcraft Rumble. And then we kind of looked at some of our, our sort of favorite spells in the game. Bit of a lighthearted one. Um, and just sort of kind of took, looked at some of the, the big spells. Spoiler alert, there is... Um, uh, a spell that we both agree on is just beyond broken compared to uh, the rest of them. Uh, but anyway, well, let's move on to what we're talking about on this half of the podcast. We're going to look at Arathi Basin. What do we think of the map? We're also going to talk a little bit about PvP. Um, there has been some discussions uh, ignited by Arclight Battery. Uh, and we're going to discuss Arclight Battery's video, maybe some of the thoughts about it. And um, we're also going to talk a little bit about kind of how we would do, uh, how we how we would impact PvP. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the, like some what we've seen, the balance change philosophy so far from Walker Rumble. And do we think it's the right way to approach balance? Um, and I know like Big has already expressed interest in sort of, sort of balancing certain units. If you haven't seen his um, kind of like, his sort of buff and nerf wish list video that he did a couple of weeks ago it's still relevant now because we haven't really had any buffs and nerfs so you can go and watch it and it would still be relevant now um but yeah let's just jump straight into a Rathi basin which you brought it up on the screen here this is the new pvp map it is all on one level there are no chests and it's all about sort of the gold mine control in the central area um the meta right now is kind of shaped up to be more about control so control decks doing really well right now um, because it's very difficult to go for the throat. Like it's very difficult to get a full base kill for a couple of reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is that you can't unbound behind the enemy base. And so you can't drop a safe pilot into the corner. Everything has to come from the front. Uh, and with dragon towers, that generally means that everything's kind of getting swept up. I think if we didn't have dragon towers, you'd probably see a slightly different Arathi Basin. But yeah, at the moment right now, dragon towers are kind of eating uh, that frontal assault that you're generally getting. Um, but yeah, so Arathi Basin, let's start off with your thoughts, Math. I've been talking for about 15 years straight. So your thoughts on Arathi Basin, kind of um, how it compares to Alterac Valley and, and kind of the meta. Okay. Uh, well, I think at this point, I'm like the expert of Arathi Basin because I've done like a video breaking down and then we've broken it down on the other podcast. Um, and then I've played a bunch of it. Uh, I think, first of all, it's um, much, much better than Arathi Basin. I think it's not even close. Um, and a lot of the things that we did mention are true, which is which are very very cool. Uh, this this is, it plays completely different. I've actually seen some units seen play that I've never thought I would have seen play. Uh, the um, plague farmer can can yeah. hit the middle with the extra range, which I've never seen a plague farmer before. Um, there's a lot of different stuff like that. I actually am pushing for the left tower, which is crazy because there is fortification. So I think when fortification goes away, uh, it's going to be even better for that exact reason. But a lot of the times I end up controlling all of the gold and I'm winning, right? But if you just over overload, and I'm going to remove a little bit of... Um, if you overload here because you're trying to push for the base, it doesn't matter because everyone's running safe, everyone's running blizzard, uh, and there's a dragon tower that does a lot of splash damage, right? So overloading you there sometimes is not worth it. So when you're full gold, you, you are still, you're sending your miner, you're still getting gold, you're still doing all of that stuff, and you are leaking, um, well then, a lot of the times, you're just better off sending a Dark Spirit Troll here. If you do take that tower... Yes, it's really hard to do, but the reward is insane. So I've actually had a lot more knockout wins um, on this map than I've had before because of the fact of that uh, other tower. And bless you, by the way, Scoundrel. <laughs> I see that you're muted. Uh, if you do get that left tower, it's extremely easy to actually go for go for the win, go for the knockout. So it's still hard because of the dragon towers, but I'm seeing much more knockout win than I did uh, on Alterac Valley. I don't really think it's close. And um, yeah, there's a lot of cool units. There's so many decks that I want to try. I don't know if they're all going to be useful, but I'm definitely seeing at least some sort of meta shift. Okay, we're seeing some meta shift, but uh, we're not seeing enough. We're going to jump into that. On your last point, 
Um, it's all like it's always the same units uh, that are still good. We have a few units that appeared that weren't good before, and a few units that were good before that are not as impressive. Um, yeah, I guess, guys, I love the map. I think I'm not. People say that um, six week is too long, and uh, it's we are gonna get tired of this map. I think it's not gonna be even as close as uh, um, Arath or uh, Alterac Valley. I think this map is so much better. So this is my overall take. I know that you don't think the map changes much, or that's what I you told me, I think on day one, maybe your mind has been changed. Um, what are your takes on this map? Yeah, I, I think like there is definitely small meta shifts that we're seeing, like Meat Wagon, for instance, yep. started getting played in Baron decks, for instance, you know, and, and now people are playing Plague Farmer as like an alternative to Meat Wagon even, just because controlling that central island is is a big deal um and you can and you can control it from your own tower on the right hand side uh by placing these longer range minis and and i think that the meta has become a little bit about like dark iron miner versus what you can use to counter dark iron miner um it, you know people have kind of gravitated towards using dark iron miner because it's just the best way to control immediately control those central uh islands the only problem and i think the problem that most people are frustrated with is that this map has not really changed the, the pain points of the fact that Safe Pilot is in every deck still. Quillbore's pretty much in every deck still. Um, I'd say that well pegs are becoming less and less common in PvP. I don't know if you agree, but I think that's just because chain lightning is becoming more common. Um, but like, you know, Safe Pilot and Quillbore for sure are still getting played in like almost every single deck. Um, maybe that's less about the map and more about the strength of the units realistically. But I do like I I I even though I don't think the meta changed massively just because Blizzard and control and, and that kind of stuff is still very, very popular. Um, I like this map significantly more than Alterac Valley. And the reason I like this map more than significantly more than Alterac Valley is that it doesn't feel like you get punished if A, you get a bad opening hand and you can't react instantly. And B, if you're not willing to commit every single thing, your, your mind, body and soul to taking a chest. Because on Alterac Valley, if you didn't commit your mind, body, and soul to taking those chests, it just was like you, you were out of the game. It was then impossible to catch up. Um, but in this, on this map, it feels like because you don't take gold instantly, you have a bit more breathing room. There's a little bit more time to think about how you want to approach a situation. And that makes it much more fun to... Um, like much more fun to play this map and have different strategies involved. Like I've been seeing Dracosath 1 push decks work. I've been seeing cycle Tyrion and stacking like 16 Tyrions on top of each other and walking down the lanes work it there's a lot of different things that i think are working um right now and i think it once we have a few more weeks of of this particular um map we'll we'll start to see some more uh meta things open up but, but i think people have just gravitated towards what has worked previously and so you're still just seeing a lot of baron a lot of jaina um ken is still really popular rend is even still being played a decent amount in fact actually the the, the the meta change for rend that's worked quite well is that flaming soul is actually quite good now because you're almost guaranteed in most situations to get some kind of value out of it so i've started running flaming soul over scale and steel because it just you're almost guaranteed to get a value out of it this time around plus if you play rend here the flying units actually are going to go support and it's 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 there's some good interaction with air units that like if there's a fight on the bridge instead of walking here and then going here they're immediately walk immediately going to fly over the bridge to support so it's it's very interesting that there's like really two ways of support for supporting the middle um i think i think it's super fun it's just uh i want to touch the point of safe pilot i want to get that clear i think safe pilot is not as good as it was in Alter in um, Alterac Valley, and I don't think it needs to be an auto include in every list. I think it's still very good. Don't get me wrong; it's still like S tier, but I think it was like SS tier before that. Um, now I think there's because there's the fact that there's no chest. I kind of see like a mini Blizzard, right? So does a lot of damage, kind of does the same thing, but there's some counterplays. And there's no immediate value. The issue with the safe pilot before on uh, Alterac Valley is that the safe pilot crashes onto a chest, gets refunded two out of the three gold, and at the same time destroyed some something else. So got some even more value and then does a double damage hit from stealth, which uh, if you want to counter, you have to play a chain lightning, which is another two gold. Uh, but now the safe pilot drops. Let's say uh, safe pilot drops onto a Darks Patrol and you're playing Darks Patrol on the Cairn list. You have your chain lightning, 
uh, safe pilot can't do anything. Right, so there's some interaction that the safe pilot is not as OP as it used to be, um, because it doesn't get that free two gold refunded. You can't just play the safe pilot. Uh, when in doubt, just play a safe pilot. You have to keep your safe pilot as a spell. I think it's much more healthy to have the safe pilot played that way. Uh, it used to be just drop the safe pilot on whatever. It's gonna get a lot of value. Get get the chest. Get control of the top bridge. It doesn't matter. But I think. Got, Okay, don't get me wrong, it's still S tier. It's still very, very good, but it's not SS tier. I don't think it's an auto include. I think it's one of the two is auto include, one of Quillbore and Safe Pal. I think one of the two is probably going to end up in every single list, and perhaps both are going to be in there. But it used to be every single list runs both of them. And now I've seen some list that runs either or. So that's my take on it. <laughs> I think you're muted. I don't often disagree with you, but my my take is this: I think I, I I think safe pilot is an auto include in every deck. I feel like if you're not running safe pilot, you're going to get blasted by someone that is running safe pilot. So it's 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 just one of those it's one of those situations where safe pilot is is not only it not only does it remove certain minis from the game because you know that safe pilot as an answer is going to make your life sad, like for instance necromancer is not being run really anymore because people just know it's just going to get safe piloted. And also because Blizzard is obviously popular. Um, Chimera, we just talked about it, like its biggest threat is Safe Pilot. Actually, if Safe Pilot didn't exist or wasn't in the meta, Chimera might actually be quite playable. Um, so there's, there's there's a lot of minis that just get kind of excluded from the meta. If Safe Pilot started to filter away or, or you or you decided to sacrifice Safe Pilot and go for something that was like a Necromancer, you know that you're just going to take a negative gold trade every time you try and play that that unit. So obviously, the, obviously timing is important. I'm not going to say like... Every single time that that unit is getting pay, played, you know you're getting safe piloted. You can bait safe, you can bait safe pilot out with other things, of course. Um, but I just think that the unit is just too good. What it offers a team for three gold is insane. And I think like there are very few other minis that fulfill that role in the team. Yes, you can run spells, but the thing about safe pilot is not only do you get the spell impact part, the damage part. You also get to play a mini on the field at the same time and that's that's very high value because obviously you always want to try and keep presence on the map um so i just i just think that safe pilot offers too much for the team and there is not there are not many other minis that fulfill the role that safe pilot does so that's, that's just why i think safe pilot is a bit yeah, more of an well, auto include I, for me I, I agree in the fact that like there's some minis that are just not playable because of safe pilot but i think like because safe pilot is played so much um you can build a deck that doesn't get destroyed by a safe pilot and you wouldn't play your own safe pilot. So, for example, the Karen list I just created runs uh, Dark Spirit Troll, Dark Spirit Troll with the Karen buff, so it survives. Mm -hmm. And then it, it uh, we, we play Sappers. So, yes, he can play the safe on the Sappers, but then it's a negative trade for him, right? Yep. Um, so, so we're good with that. And then uh, all of the, we play like Chain Lightning and all the other stuff to count. We have Quillboard. Quillboard destroys Safe Pilot extremely easily. Um, so yeah, I just play Quillboard and I don't feel like I need to play the Safe Pilot at all, actually. So it's interesting. No, that is interesting. And I, I, I totally get it. I'll I, send you my list. <laughs> I want you to try I, I've it. Seen it. I've, watched, I've watched the video. Okay, I've okay. watched the video. I, 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 I just think that although, although that's definitely a way to approach the game, I think especially the higher you go and the better that people get with safe pilot, the more that's going to struggle just because safe pilot is just way too adaptable. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but it's still, it's still like extremely strong in the fact that like, it sucks that some units are just not available to be played in any list because of safe pilot. It's still, yes. it's still like extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. Um, but I, I like your thinking. And I think if more people thought like that, we'd probably have a bit more of a varied meta. Um, you know, I, I think that the, the, the problem is that, in my eyes, there just isn't much else in the deck. The, the, I, the, think, the, I think it, Dark Eye Miner feels... does such a good job. Um, sometimes I, I think I like to play Dark Eye Miner more than safe in a lot of scenarios. Um, yeah, I, I like I like the idea of Dark Eye Miner. Um, one interaction. Obviously it doesn't... I was just going to say one interaction of the Dark Eye Miner, which I, I want to tell you guys, which is very cool, is that if you play your Dark Eye Miner here to go steal that gold mine, it starts to get attacked by that uh, that dragon towers, right? Um, but it only works if there's gold mine because the dark the dark eye miner is going to stick on the gold mine and is not going to take 
any damage because it's going to be just on the edge of the flame tower or the dragon tower. Yeah. And yeah, then in yeah, the yeah. meanwhile, you could just push here and just do a lot and a lot of damage here. So not only are you stealing a gold by playing Dark Iron Miner here, while well, you're still creating an immense uh, push here on the left. So that's another interaction. So that's another reason why I think the Dark Iron Miner is, is so freaking good on this map. Yes, I agree with you. I, I've used that trick quite a few times. Um, the the only thing that I you know to say about it is that um, you can do it when there is one gold there. So if you do it when there's one gold there, it's it's technically a net equal trade because you gain a gold but you deny one gold from your opponent. So it's technically a net, net equal trade in that sense. Um, but it, it you know you then just you're really just going dead even because ultimately Dark Iron Man is going to do nothing from that position anyway. It's just going to walk into the enemy base and die once it's, once it's farmed the gold. The one thing is if you're running mines, it will drop a mine there, which is quite nice if they're trying to then drop a kobold later on. The mine will just instantly one-shot the kobold. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you can get two gold, then it's great because you're, getting, you're going to get a positive two gold trade because you're not only getting two gold in your favor, you're denying two easy gold or two safe gold from your opponent. So yeah, it's an interesting location. The only problem is that you're dropping up Dark Iron Miner there. Often you might not drop Dark Iron Miner in the central platform. It just depends on what kind of control you've got over the map to yeah, kind of make that like decision. A, you need like a fast unit to at least go uh, yeah. contest those gold mine until you cycle back to your um, miner or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah. that's another good point about this map. Uh, that's another thing I realized I liked a lot is um, playing your miner at the right place like you actually have to play your miner correctly. You don't just drop it in the left lane and then click on the arrow so it goes right. You have to, okay, I have two gold here. Is it more worth it to play my miner here? And then yep. perhaps it's going to go get that that gold mine, perhaps not. Or should I send it here and then go to the middle? Okay, but I'm playing against the Baron. So Baron has um, Baron has those skeletal mages. So I need to support that miner. Am I able to create enough space here to... F I know there's a lot more plays a lot more strategies with the miner that i really wasn't uh present in the uh, alterac valley yeah I, I agree and also if i've you know there's a lot of really cool plays you can do around like using dark iron miner to deny cobalt entrance to the um to the central island and yeah there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do um on this map and like i said to, to kind of wrap this up i think arathi basin is a positive change to the pvp environment it definitely has introduced some kind of new things um Ultimately, a lot of people have kind of gone down standard routes, and you'll find that a lot of people still are still playing kind of standard-ish decks. Yeah. But I, in a few weeks, maybe in a week or so time, things might open up where you start to see some some different stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I did a PvP roundup um, video this week that was basically just like it was five decks that were very similar to the to the previous meta because they still work. They still work really well. Um, those decks are kind of ubiquitous in terms of how they how the how they can be used. Um, but I think like give it another week, we might see some different different shakeups. We're already seeing the attempted sappers cheat death meta, which I don't think is going to last very long, but like there's, um, there's probably going to be, um, some different, some different decks shaking up the meta in a week's time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you were, you were going to jump to the next stop. That's true. I'm looking at the time. Uh, the next topics are going to probably be lengthy. So we're better off, uh, going to the next topic. Take it away. Yes. Yeah. Cause otherwise I think we will be here for a long time. Yep. Um, Fixing PvP. This is an interesting one. Uh, there's been some interesting videos sparked by Arclight Battery today. I also then did a reaction to it. It was kind of talked about some of the pitfalls in PvP. Um, Big will know this well, but once you enter into the three k play at three k plus arena, and once you start playing with your your leader, especially as you get towards four k. People who are queuing at 4k plus in their leaders are sometimes waiting up to an hour. And the, the kind of dis discussion is around how can we incentivize more people to play PvP? And when we say fix PvP, we don't mean like, you know, fix the levels because, you know, obviously there's always going to be that level, that advantage of paying for some way. But how do we how do we make PvP more interesting for more people? It's kind of the, the, the crux of the discussion and there are a lot there have been lots of different things suggested i'm just going to quickly list off those suggestions and then um big i'm going to let you discuss some of the ones that you're more interested in so starting with level caps adding another level cap between wait, wait, three and four wanna, do you want to just talk about the issues <laughs> before we go into the suggestion or, yes uh... i mean the, the the major so what i'm saying is that the major issues are that the people are just not incentivized to play PvP, and okay. there are there are, yeah, there, yeah. are there are issues around that with like rewards, which we'll talk about in like the solutions, etc. Um, 
I, I think we'll, once, we, once we talk about those solutions, we can kind of touch on on touch on what they're trying to trying to do in terms of what they're trying to do to fix the PvP ladder. But ultimately, the core problem is that not enough people are play, interested in playing PvP. You're right. Then again, rewards are a reason. The fact that we have a, a massive level imbalance once you hit to hit nine k plus or three k plus on each leader is also a, a problem. Um, there's no reset, meaning that there's no real reason to grind from season to season at the moment. There's no end of season rewards, so it doesn't really feel like there's a reason to get higher. Um, but I'll talk about we'll talk about all of these as we go through some of the solutions. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll I'll quickly list off some of the solutions that have been suggested, and then yep. Big, I'll let you touch on a couple, and I'll try and touch touch on the others. We can have some discussions. Um, raising level cap, so adding another level cap of like seven to like the the three to four k range some people have even gone as far as to saying adding a level cup of nine to the four to five k range and then five k onwards kind of letting things go over open to ten um that's been a suggestion obviously improving pvp rewards that's uh, obviously been a suggestion something that me and you talked about on our previous podcast was kind of making pvp its own thing like having its own daily rewards having its own section in the ui to make it more enticing um there has been discussion of seasonal resets. So you reset uh, a little bit lower or your rewards, you can reclaim certain rewards. Like let's say your end of track, if you go on the track, um, I don't know where you can, if you can click on the um, the little bar, the bar chart. Yeah. So you like the rewards that you get for the third, the third one from each, each um, tier, maybe just resetting those so you can reclaim some gold. Cause like, frankly, giving people two, 2k two gold, at the, at the end of a season is not is a nice reward for wanting to get them to grind a little higher so they know they're going to get that on the next season um there's been a, a talk of reducing the um the the scale of the pvp ladder so bringing it down to like 15k max or bringing it even down to 12k max or whatever like people have talked about rem, like sort of lowering the cap of like the, the max level of honor that you can get to um and then obviously people have also uh people have also talked about um the the idea of just improving rewards in general across the pvp track just making it so that there's, there's something more enticing to go for because modest tomes all the way up to like 15k just ain't it you know um so which are any of those that you want to tackle like as a discussion point um, um which ones have really stood out to you as kind of big fixes that you could you could look at yeah if i just may uh may say the um the thing of having the uh emote at 16k mm. I mean, I don't think, I think it's just common sense that it, it doesn't make any sense of being at 16k, <laughs> right? Um, so if we look at the leaderboards, I think it was, what, five players that got that emote last season? So yeah, why it was, it, okay. why are Blizzard promoting the emote? In a, if, if you guys have not seen, Blizzard had... Uh, posted a video on the new season promoting those two new emotes while one of the emotes no one is going to get no one is going to get uh excalibur and i are not going to get that emote so i think it's like surely they know that i mean there's statistics and there's statistics they 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 are aware of that and, I, and like when i say common sense i'm not saying like they are lacking common sense my point is they are aware of that uh and i just think it's a proof of um the fact that it takes a lot of time to do some changes because this one is an obvious change that doesn't make any sense that it's there and i think that's the most outrageous out of all of them because all the other ones could be subjective as to okay we want to do this because of that we don't want to remove we don't want to put too much emphasis on pvp because we want pve let's say it right i'm not saying those are are necessarily the right arguments but there's arguments to be made but having an emote and promoting the emote while no one can actually get it um is just a flaw in uh design and i think it's just a thing of it's a, just a proof that we're that there is it takes long to make change for uh, this team so um yeah i don't know I, it's just like that that was the worst for me i just wanted to me mention that first no i i think that's a good point because um if you guys remember when season two was being introduced they had a flagship ui thing that came up that said season two the three big things were exactly, chimera yeah. and a couple of emotes as and i i think arclight said on his on his video five people unlocked the emote like you said for the last season five out of everyone that plays warcraft rumble so you're now you're advertising something on your um your your season flash ui thing that is that five people are going to get 
and maybe some more this season because it's been a bit more time but like frankly it's going to be such a minute part of your player base are going to unlock that actual emote and i get it that it's a stretch reward but you need to spend so much money to kind of get to the point where you're able to catch up with people getting to that level yeah to, to me that emote um should be um it should be the 10k reward to me. It should be the 10k reward. I think it should be the 10k reward. The 10k. I got. I got. We, we obviously we've unlocked the 10k reward, which is Chimera, which is an uncommon version of a Chimera. So you get to, at least you're not getting a one star Sylvanas like you got in the in the previous season. Um, now it's season. four. Now it's four. Yeah. Now it's four. So you're getting an uncommon. You're technically getting an uncommon Chimera, um, which is still kind of a bit of a lackluster reward in my opinion, given you get a rare one basically from the the guild. Um, but yeah, I think I think the emote should be a 10k reward. It should be something that's that's hard-ish to achieve, but not impossible to achieve. And that's 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 what makes the 16k a bad taste. Because frankly, for most players, it is just impossible. For me, uh, for me, I think it should be like the, um, the if you guys play Marvel Snap or no Marvel Snap, there's other card games that does that. But like. There's like a seasonal card back in Marvel Snap that they give every season if you reach the max rank, right? And I think that should be it. So it should be something that's difficult to reach, but it is still reachable. Like you just mentioned, I don't know the exact number. Maybe let's say 1% of the player base, right? Now we're talking about five people in the whole uh, the whole population of the game. I'm, maybe like 1% should be able to, to actually reach it, let's say. And then if they want to put something there, put a crazy avatar that no one else is going to have. I'm fine with that. But like emote is a way to um, like socialize or it's a way to interact with other players. It's actual content and it feels like there's just blocking content. Anyway, I guess we're talking about an emote. That's not the biggest issue here. Um, the biggest issue is that people are not playing PvP. And I don't, I don't even think just bringing that emote to 10k would fix instantly PvP. Um, I think maybe a little bit people would push to 10k. But um, I love the idea of the level caps that you mentioned to level 7. Uh, and perhaps you need level 9. I don't see why this is such an issue. I think, um, I think level 7 is good because after level 7, it's like... Okay, well, so people could be level 10, level 9, level 8. So it does, I don't think we need like a level 9 afterwards. And uh, But you can, you're still allowed to push if you're level 8 and you're, or if you're level uh, 6 and you're, you want to push against people that are level 7, right? Um, I think that would be a good change. But the biggest, biggest thing is PvP is just not promoted. I, we talked about that last time. If we look, well, I don't want to start a game here. If if we just look at the screen, PvP is just that button here that no one wants to click on it. Okay, there's if you play, guys play other games, what they're gonna do is they're gonna make you click on the button. They're gonna force you to put you into a game to show you how it works. They're gonna explain it to you. They're they're gonna make you make it against the bot, and they're gonna pause so you understand everything that is happening. Um, none of that onboarding is happening. Um, I think, like you said, it should be one of the uh, tabs that's under the screen right here and i think this would help a lot and uh, obviously there goes the reward but just like i think it's just too intimidating to actually do pvp they need to fix that before season three because you mentioned all the things about all the issues and why there's not that much player uh, playing it but let's not forget people are still doing the campaign a lot right my best friend uh chris my best friend Chris that you guys have seen on my channel, um, he is still just doing campaign. It doesn't play PvP, but what he he used to play Clash Royale all the time. But like he just feels like he needs to push his minis more, so he just doesn't play PvP. He feels like there's not enough rewards. So yeah, I guess the biggest take he's telling me is like he wants to upgrade his dungeon to full gold before he wants to upgrade his units and he wants to get talents um, before he could do some PvP. Right, um, so. If they're not going to fix this part of uh, allowing players that don't feel ready to play PvP, and what I mean fixing is I mean making less intimidating, well, they at least have to make it so when people do reach that end game that it feels rewarding, that it feels like it's end game content that is extremely replayable. So there is PvP revamp and uh, this should help. I think PvP revamp is going to help a lot, but we need those extra changes that we are mentioning uh, with PvP because uh, the PvP revamp of having different map might actually make the game feel 
more intimidating for newer players, which is one of the biggest issues. So what they do, and I'm sorry, I, uh, more thoughts are arriving <laughs> as I'm talking, uh, then I'll let you talk. But in Clash Royale, um, what they do is that there's arena, right? It's always the same map, but like they play on a different arena. I would like something like that. So you would all play on the same first map until you're past 1K. And then up to 2K, you unlock a new map. So you could play on either of the two maps and then 3K and then 4K. So you unlock all the, let's say four maps of the pool or let's add some threshold, you have all the maps. Uh, and that would be better for newer players. Uh, it would be less intimidating. We need another tab. We need to force them into games to show them that it's not so scary. Maybe you could disable talents until uh, 1K. Um, a lot of stuff needs needs to be made, but uh, mostly if rewards are better, player would play it more for sure. Yeah, I think you've, you've touched on a lot of points. And I think like I'm going to try and, and, and give you my thoughts um, as succinctly as I can. I rambled a lot in my video today. I always ramble. But um, yeah, firstly, like you getting users into PvP, right? You mentioned it. It, the, the, it needs to be its own thing. It needs to have its own daily rewards. There needs to be the need, the need to be the PvP needs to have its own incentives for people to want to go and play it. So it, it needs to ha kind of be its its sort of separate part of the game. That every day there is a reason to play. Um, and and if you don't play, you're actually missing out. So there's a bit of FOMO. It's like you're, you're missing out on the ability to kind of like progress your account if you're not playing PvP in some way, shape, or form. Secondly, I think there needs to be better, as you mentioned, a better explanation of how you actually play PvP. A lot of people are probably playing with like level eight and level nine minis and thinking, oh, I can't play PvP because I'm just not leveled enough. The when they don't they don't realize that they're actually going to be good enough to get to, to 2k honor on every single leader before the level cap gets expanded to five, even at level eight and level nine minis, right? So there needs to be a better explanation of like, no, you can play PvP. Your minis are capped at level one. And what that means is that, you know, and you should, there should be something on the UI that says your your level is level one or your level is level three. And so you, you're you at you're at the cap for this honor rating or something like that, right? So there yeah. just needs to be better explanation of to people that's saying, yeah, it, you know, your decks are good enough for PvP up and you know up until this level cap. Or there'll be an elegant way of tackling this problem. I'm I'm oversimplifying it in the way that I'm talking about it. But I think there's a, probably a lot of players that look at PvP and think there's no way that my decks are going to be competitive in PvP right now. Like you mentioned, my decks aren't for full gold. I don't have uncommon minis. I don't have talents. So people are going to feel like PvP is just just out of reach for them because they they aren't at a point with their decks that they feel that they can compete. Whereas whereas most people who've been playing for two days can get to 2k honor on leaders that they have level eight and level nine minis on it's not unachievable so there just needs to be some better coaxing of of kind of like letting new players know that pvp is not that challenging it's not that crazy you can enjoy it at the very early early stages of the game and that's Kind of why I think there needs to be some sort of branch off of the tutorial. There needs to be you get through Westfall and it says, yeah. let's play a PvP game. This is what PvP is. You're, you know, up until 1,000 honor on every leader, you're capped at level one for all your minis. Up until 2,000, you're capped at level three. So you can enjoy PvP really easily, even as a new player. And then that might encourage people to kind of like sort of pick it up and, and kind of go for it. And then on top of that, for people that are aware of PvP, do have good decks, but just can't be bothered. You know, the reason is that there just needs to be better incentives to rewards. The reward track is terrible. Um, and to be completely frank with you, even I struggle to motivate myself to play PvP. Like the only thing that I was able to get of any value last last season was the epic core. Um, and now I've literally only got the epic core to go for again. All of the rest of the rewards are just not worth it. Well, to be fair, there's keep People just don't mention it. I just want to be fair about the whole thing. You do get quite a bit amount of XP by doing uh, PvP. So if you're playing yeah. PvP for like three yeah. hours, the same deck, you're going to get a good amount of XP. Just as much yeah, you do, you do. as yeah. if you would quest. But uh, still, it's, not, it's, it's just like XP for like a specific mini f doesn't feel like a reward. So... Like, why am I pushing while I could just be playing my my Chalga list that's below 1K? I would have a bigger win percent. I would have 100% win rate, and I would get way more XP than if I'm playing my Karen list at uh, 3,600, right? So that's kind of what I did. I, I kind of, like, upgraded all my minis 
a lot. Uh, they're almost all past 2K. Um, and a lot of the time I'm pushing a lot of them to 3K because of that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't feel like a reward. Like this uh, Arclight energy, 200 Arclight energy. It's not, mean, even, it's not even one reroll. Like, and, 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 that, and exactly. that, that's, that, it's yes. absolutely nutty to think that it's not even one reroll, you know, frankly. And, and for us... Me and Big probably took two weeks to go from 10k to 11k, realistically, like when we were playing back in the last season. And now that it's getting even more competitive with more whales and more high level people, you know, I'm, I'm not anticipating that I'm going to reach 12k for like at least two or three weeks. So to spend two or three weeks of potentially hundreds of, ga hundreds of games grinding to get 200 Arclight energy as one of my little reward tokens is ridiculous. That's not even one reroll on one of my leader's slots, which is just honestly a spit in the face for. High, how high level um this is i just i just feel i genuinely think that blizzard thought that people would climb the pvp ladder much quicker than they were able to i genuinely thought blizzard thought that people people would be interested in pvp the the really high level people would actually be way higher than they are the the mass population would probably be somewhere around 10 to 15k on average most people and it just hasn't worked out that way. And that's probably why the rewards are so pathetic up until a certain point is that they just they just anticipated that people would be able to breeze through these ranks for the most part. But it just hasn't actually worked out that way. Um, and now you've got people like me, you, Arclight, okay. Groot, well, etc., who are just who are just basically scrapping for 200 Arclight energy. <laughs> yeah. What about you just adjust the honor rating as um, you just get more and lose less? until you reach that 15k mark so like and it would be gradual i think it can just be an easy fix with that um so you would still have to play a lot but then uh if you're playing against someone that's much more over level than you and then he beats you you would lose like 10 instead of losing 50 or 60 right so it wouldn't yeah feel as bad and if you win you would get like double um and even against the same level opponent you would get more much more and lose much less until you reach like that like those like 15 uh thousand threshold that's kind of um it's it's kind of elo inflation though I, the thing is like you you kind of want honor to represent a certain skill level to an extent yeah but it I would still be represented but up to the top right because right now everyone's represented it to one yeah, why did why did why don't you just condense the actual honor ranks then so instead of instead of yeah, just making well, it so that you gain more honor more, than just because there's more rewards yeah i but then just improve the rewards like the xp rewards it, it i guess it's different essentially yeah, me I mean, and you are, me and you are just like thinking of different ways to, to, yeah, to yeah, yeah you know to to skin a cat and so i was trying to think of another saying except i say except if i say skin a cat i hate the phrase i hate the idiom skin a cat but yeah I, either way i have like a cat it, okay <laughs> i'm allergic to cats so i don't have a cat i've got two dogs um but you know like, like ultimately we there's just there's several different ways that you can tackle this yeah, all yeah. of them boil down to the same issue is that most of the rewards are unachievable for people and and that just feels stupid when you've got rewards like 200 arc -like energy that me and you are still struggling to push past because we're at at that point where it takes 10 or 15 minutes to get a game you queue into mr deep breath level 10 jaina deck and you just get instantly one shot so you know it, uh, it's it's i just want to say for me my personal experience is that it hasn't been 10 to 15 minutes like two no no to be fair two, the start minutes. of this season has been better the, the, between three and 3.8k has been much better for me than it was last season which is a good thing i will i will add some positive to this discussion well, I, I just want to give i just want to be fair <laughs> i just want to be fair if we're having this discussion but keep no, I, I i agree with you and i think like i i think like I'm only going off like last season. Last season, towards the end of the season, it was like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, but minutes I wasn't to keep... playing at the end of the last season. I wasn't. Yeah, playing but that's PvP. a problem, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. want people to play. You want people to exactly. play all the way through the season. But, but so that's, that, my that's point. a problem in a yeah. sense. Yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying, and that that leads leads me on to like the the sort of the the other part of the rewards. We didn't get any rewards for where we placed in season one. There were no rewards for having how high how high we managed to push our honor, other than just the reward tracks that were there available to us. And as we've already mentioned, they're not very good. You know, most games when they reset you, they give you a reward based on where you placed. League of Legends gives you a skin um, and also like some yeah. cosmetics for where you where you placed. Uh, yeah, Clash Brawl, Royale, Brawl like, Stars, a lot of Brawl Stars. Yeah, they, yeah. they give you like depending on how high you place in Brawl Stars, you get loads of those little chests that help you level up your yeah um, whatever they're called brawlers. Clash Royale does the same thing. Like wherever you place in Clash Royale, you you get you get a sort of a chest at the end of the season. 
Command and Conquer Rivals did exactly the same thing. I loved. I keep talking about that game in these but podcasts. That's the but... point of being reset, right? It's like, oh yeah, we are resetting you, but here's the reward in exchange for resetting you. But now it's like, oh, here's a reset. Uh, go back grinding your rank again for what reason? Bragging rights, sure. But like, bragging rights is only fun if you're like in the top 100, like we are. But if if you're not in like the top 100, then it's like, oh, I'm. I don't know, uh, 1,320 seconds. Like who, like, who cares, right? You're not... It, it's like, it's hard to be motivated to actually push PvP. I think, like, for us, it's actually... I think for us, PvP is much more fun than for other players because of that. And I do... Yeah, I, and I do remember being stuck at 9k for the longest time, and I was just playing all my other decks until I was pushing them to 3k. Because I was like, well, I have to upgrade my unit. So I do remember that. And that was a long period of time that I was doing that. I Almost all of my leaders are at 3K because there was a point last season where I did just play stuff that was below 3K because I didn't really see any point of playing anything that yep. was above 3K. And I think that if I'm doing that as a content creator and you're doing that as a content creator, everybody else is doing that. Yep. Um, and, and, it's, and it's a problem because you need, for, for not only for us, but also for the whales, um, you need people to want to play at that elo bracket. You need people to want to play at that honor bracket because otherwise you're just going to get the same pool of people matching over and over again. Like I, one thing I will say is although I'm finding matches quicker now, I am still just queuing into the same people over and over again. Like I am getting matches versus the same faces in a certain time period. It's not varied. I'm playing the same person. So, I, you know, and whilst that does help for strategy and does help for like thinking how you're going to win because you know the decks they're playing. That's not the um, design though. Yeah, it's not it's not designed. You don't want it to be like that, especially at this level. Um, you, you want it to be like every every match is going to be testing you to react on the fly rather than having to like know who you're playing up against. But there were some people I, I, I played twice this guy. I, I don't know what his name was. It was EX something. Um, but he was a level 10 Ren deck and he had like level 10 everything and he just kept deep breathing me. And I was like, well, I just know that if I play this guy, I'm just not going to win because he's got deep breath and like level 10 units. It's just, I could try. I'm going to give it my best shot, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just basically free honor for that guy when um, when I queued into him. So yeah, it, it just we we I think we've 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 talked about it a lot, and we've we've kind of covered our big okay, main let's, main points. Let's just uh, do summarize. 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 Bring yeah. it in yeah. because uh, people do listen to that. And guys, uh, once again, feel free to tell us down below. We know that the Blizzard devs are listening, and please, when you give feedback, please make sure to be respectful. Um, they want to help. Well, they want to make a great game. We we are in contact with some of them. As they seem passionate, and people keep like there's a phrase where like, uh, you know how a small ship can change quickly, but then a large ship like Blizzard is uh is gonna have a uh, some issues turning turning the ship around. So it takes time. And okay, they are working. There's a lot of bureaucracy in those big big companies and stuff. Uh, even though it's a gaming company, but anyway, so PVP. PvP, its own thing, okay? That's first. Its own thing, its own uh, its own slot like that, okay? So we'd do that, and then uh, we would do um, better onboarding, okay? So there would be onboarding to making you cl click there, and then uh, a little tutorial explaining, detailing all of that. Uh, better rewards as well, and the re rewards will be well presented um and uh yeah is that pretty much the end level cap let's say if we want to add yeah yeah that, 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 so essentially we have come up with a few discussion points that the primary goal is to incentivize more people to yep. play pvp the the biggest issue with pvp right now especially at the high levels is that there's just not enough people wanting to play there isn't a reason for most people to play you just need to give them more of a reason because it's it's the it's the game mode that your veteran and your high level players are most interested in, mm -hmm. and so you you want to retain those players because they're the people like your content creators, they're your biggest game advocates, they're the people that spend the most money. So you want to be able to give them something to play for, um, and so yeah, I think like a lot of things we just we, we all discovered is it. all it's all to tackle the major issue of just incentivizing especially newer players to pick up and give pvp a go because it's the game frankly and this is the way i feel it is the game mode that has hooked me i like the pve aspect Same. i like the puzzle aspects i get it there's definitely some fun in that but it's a one-time thing once you've done that puzzle it, it loses its charm to an extent right pvp is a puzzle every game 
in in a way and there's always little things you can do to change and pvp is what's kept me interested in this game yep. since the release and since the beta that's my that's my, my sort of my honest take so therefore you want to do things that to, to kind of make that game mode more attractive to more people because it is what will hook you and keep players retained in the game, I think. Yeah, and we have a big surge of players that are still doing the campaign and are still in that honeymoon phase that are going to emerge soon. So I'm not um, looking at it in a negative way. I don't think... I think we're like we're in a state where it's like, okay, let's make PvP better so that when all these players feel they're ready and uh, after the campaign and stuff they just jump and they stay in the game so that's the point and just one last thing i would add to a uh, fix pvp i would add some mid-season balance change so this is a segue to our next topic um do you want to take it off i just really wanted to do that segue i thought it was no perfect. it was a good segue it was a good segue <laughs> and i think like um i think a lot of people were anticipating season two balance changes. I think there was a lot of anticipation in the community, Big Math being one of them. I was hoping, yeah. not expecting necessarily, but I was hoping. Yeah, we would get some balance changes. Now, look, we have talked to the devs, and I, and I, I think, unfortunately, we cannot say exactly what the devs have said to us. Um, and But it, it, it kind of confirmed what I thought about we the PvP. We haven't talked much. We haven't talked No, we much. haven't talked much. They, they kind of gave an indication, but ultimately, let's just go from what the public information that we have. There has been, for, since I've been playing, and let's not count the last balance patch because that was very minor changes to Thanos, right? And, and some other little bits. But the, the biggest balance patch happened in the beta. And I've been playing for probably now two and a half months, um, and maybe three months now. And there was one patch in the beta that was what, what you would call a balance patch. Now, it wasn't sizable, but it did do a couple of things. It a made few Dark Iron. I think few talents were reworked. Yes. It was some talent changes for Holy Nova. It was um, Dark Iron Minor. Its mine damage went up, Earth um, Elemental. which is why it became a bit more relevant. Um, what did you say again? Sorry. The Earth Elemental uh, minion spawn talent was uh, health was increased or reduced or some tweaks. Yes. Yeah, so it was something. I, I, actually, no, it was the, the, the damage that you got. Um, the AOE damage that happened when Earth Elemental killed a tower was increased. So the um, the Shrapnel Blast ta talent had the damage increased. Again, useless talent. Still, no one's using it. Um, but what but what I would say is there's been one balance patch since I've been playing, and that was a I would call it a minor balance patch. It didn't really shake things up. The only thing that it really did is that it made people look at Dark Eye Miner and say, "Oh, that Gold Mine talent might actually be good now." And that's why you're seeing a lot of Gold Mine talent on on Dark Eye Miner. Um, but for the most part, Blizzard is relatively slow to implement balance changes. Um, uh, if I may, I think... Yes, please do. I think the point that hurts the most is that um, the way it feels, it's that, once again, we can't uh, give exactly what they told us, but it did tell us much. It's that um, I think everyone in the community wants or wants a balance, there's some people that doesn't want because they're invested in some units and stuff, but I think like the positive outweighs the negative. I think the point of the game is to have a lot of different units you can play and create a lot of decks. That's what's super fun for the long term and, and all of that. And I think what it hurts is the fact that it's it, it feels, it's not because they were late or it's not because it took time to do balance change, but it's because their intention is not to do a lot of balance change because... Um, we know that balance changes are easy to, fairly easy to implement, right? They actually did a couple, so they could have done more. So it feels intentional. So to me, when I, I kind of saw that there was no balance change, it hurt because I was, I was like, oh, okay, so that means we're never getting balance change. So we, there, there's no like period where after this, after this period, there's no like um, light at the end of the tunnel, kind of. Which, which for me is the hardest part of, of the um, whole balance change philosophy. Uh, and I think it's like, if we want some balance change, and that's why I'm so passionate about it, if we do want some balance change, we need everyone to rally together and share your thoughts, like on the video down below, but uh, on the Discord. Please do it respectfully, okay, guys? If you guys go out um too aggressively it does a negative effect we have to convey the message that the general popularity of people who are uh grounded who people are not just haters or angry we need to you guys share your opinions 
and say that we want balance change so that Blizzard knows that the majority of the population wants that. So, um, yeah, I guess that's just the thing I wanted to get off my ch get off my chest. Um, I think balance change are just crucial. I think they would fix. I could play this game forever if they was some decent balance change. I would. I keep saying the middle of a season would be the best, but uh, yeah. I mean, look, I I I want to reiterate your point. Uh, all devs should get feedback devs should receive feedback about the game it's what helps craft a better game for the future but it should be done extremely respectfully make i sure love the devs sure that work on yeah. exactly i i love the devs that work on on walker rumble i know the walker rumble team um the, the the creator team has been super fantastic with us they've been really communicative um and in general like the you know the, the team are doing a good job they're obviously very passionate we heard them give a presentation on chimera before it came out it was very the guy who, who was giving the presentation was extremely was passionate awesome yeah yeah really awesome experience so they love the game as much as we do they are passionate um, they are passionate i guarantee you guys they are passionate yeah absolutely um but what what i will say is that i see both sides of the coin for balance changes and i understand why blizzard might be a little slow to it um there's a few reasons why blizzard might be a little slow one of the reasons is that maybe they're not maybe not willing to go down the refund path for these things and there probably will be if you see big changes to certain units people crying for a refund because as you mentioned they've invested a lot of time potentially even real money into grinding certain units i think my answer to that would be suck it up it's a live service game like that's just that's just how it goes sometimes yeah, uh, yeah. um the thing is like the, the unit that gets nerfed if there's a constant balance change system uh, that happens every, uh, and that is recurrent and happens quick enough, your unit is going to come back eventually in the meta. There's going to be some meta shift. And it, so you never truly lose. Because the thing is, I think people are completely PTSD from Hearthstone. And Hearthstone, when they nerf a card, they just kill it and never see it again. Or yeah, when I happens, was playing. Yeah. When I was playing, that was the case. So I think people are PTSD about that. But I'm from marvel snap where some unit some cards get nerfed okay and i'm just talking tiny tweaks up tiny tweaks but often okay um uh, so no units would completely get obliterated or completely get op uh immediately and uh i think that would help just so much the meta and uh also everyone's affected by that the whole oh i invested in this unit scum. yes everyone is affected so being smashed by level nine minis will still happen, but those will be the minis that um, were nerfed and people are still running. While if you change your mini to get to get better minis that are less strong, but then you have a better counter because they were buffed, I think it's just much a more healthy way of um, of holding a meta, a meta game in, well, especially in uh, Warcraft Rumble. Um, yeah, guys, make sure to tell us your thoughts down below because I might, if everyone's against me on this take, Please feel free to tell me, but I think we desperately need, like I said, minor tweaks often. I think that's the best, right? Yeah, and look, I, I think ultimately I empathize, especially if you're like a, a smaller spender or a free-to-play player and you've been told by content creators that these are the best minis you've got to go for because they're in the meta and they suddenly get changed. And you're like, oh, well, I've got nothing to replace this with. I get it. But... I, you know, I do very much subscribe to this is a live service game and I want there to be that element of live service where you are seeing things getting addressed when they need to get addressed. Um, the other sort of the, the follow up on on that in terms of like, I understand the other side of the coin is that um, obviously it's quite new. We've only just had global release. Maybe Blizzard are looking at it from the sense of that, look, people have just defined this meta because this is the way it's been defined and this goes back to that pvp point about having more people in the top level of play but then maybe they're just hoping that over time things will shift the meta will open up people will get you know like you said maybe maybe we don't need to be so obsessed with safe pilot maybe that line of thinking is exactly what blizzard is hoping will happen more and more and so therefore like the idea of of, of balance changes becomes less needed because the meta opens up a little bit and 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 people start trying out different things and they find that they work i still think that we're going to need more players in pvp for that to be the case um but you know I, I think ultimately that's maybe where they're looking for it as well uh and then we also know that they're we also know that they're releasing units down the line um and so then maybe they're sort of waiting to see that is that going to impact anything like you know like that that's another way that we could potentially look at it so but i i, I kind of see it from blizzard's perspective i see where they might not want to uh you know balance change that often but obviously me and you are coming from the hardcore player perspective where we are like we are sick to death 
of Baron being the number one chill of the grave, Skeleton Magi being the obnoxious in every PvP map that's ever played. We want to just see something different. Yeah, so we, we come from that perspective where it's like, there are, we think there are things that do need to get touched on and and we'd ideally like to see it happen sooner rather than later. But there, there are probably some people that they aren't even aware that certain units are OP and they're just happily playing their little PvE campaign. So, I, you know, I can kind of see it from both perspectives. Yeah, but yeah. The thing is like, let's say safe. Is safe and quill are played in every single list. Nerfing safe and quill will affect every everyone. It will also be just as valuable for you. It doesn't matter. Your safe gets nerfed, but if your opponent, your opponent's safe also gets nerfed. Anyway, um, I do, I, I do understand the whole PVE thing, and I do understand the whole invest, investing in uh, units, but I don't understand why we can't just buff sh uh, shit unit, like. <laughs> yeah. What's the yeah, what's that's fair. can you is there an argument there? Because like. Oh, but if you buff a weak unit, a, a good unit might get not as sure. But like, come on, like uh, Angry Chicken Army, never seen it in PvP. Warsong Raider, um, uh, or sorry, Warsong Grunts, never played in PvP. Uh, Vultures, never played in PvP. Like, there, there's so many stuff. Molten Giant, never played in Molten PvP. Yeah. Molten Giant, so many stuff that. So, it's just like I don't see why they can't do at least small tweaks. I don't think anyone will be too mad if small like will you be and by the way all my all my epic minis which I literally spent uh, today I spent a hundred dollars worth of coins just to get my Karen from rare to epic a hundred dollars right but if Karen gets nerfed because Karen is too strong I'm gonna be the one the most affected so like and I don't care I think it's I think it's needed. I think it's needed. I need to spend more money, Big. You're outspending me now. I, I haven't spent enough money in the game. <laughs> well, I have to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't. I, I don't. I I understand, but uh, I, I think it's still needed. And I think. I guess my point is the uh, good outweighs the bad by a large margin, and especially like a new season. It's a new season. Like, or, or, or what about that argument, right? What about your media you invested a lot is now shit because of the new map? You're not complaining about the new map, are you? So so why does it, a balance change, why does it, the balance change make sense? Anyway, sorry guys if I'm coming strong. I'm just passionate about you're passionate. that one. You're, passionate, you're yeah. passionate about balance changes. I, I agree with you too. I agree with you. And I don't I want to bring like, negativity, but... Go ahead. If we're going to go down the path of balance changes, I would, I like your right suggestion. Nerf bad units rather than... Sorry, buff bad units rather than nerf good units because no one loses from a bad unit getting buffed. No one loses. Um, Obviously... Your, your gotta make sure power creep but uh yeah yeah it's, it's, to an extent but like not not many people lose from a bad a bad unit game but it gives something something new for someone who doesn't have that unit to aim for um and it, you know there's still that potential for you to use your good units that haven't been nerfed so i think like yeah but i'd like to see them buff rather than nerf if i'm if i'm being completely honest with you in terms of approach to balance changes but you know i'll, I'll summarize very quickly because i realize we're running onto an hour for this this side of the podcast as well um Blizzard are quite slow with PvP changes. There are probably some reasons for that. We've explored them just a little bit. We ultimately feel that we would like it to be a quicker pace. I think we kind of subscribe to the idea that a live service game, it's okay to have that kind of reactivity in the way that you kind of approach your units. But there's also that understanding that people have spent money, time and effort getting certain units because they think that they're strong uh, and they might be feel a bit miffed if they get nerfed and, and things change. But um, ultimately, we think think that going for the buff route rather than nerf route would be more beneficial for everyone. And just I would go for both, but it. I'm just saying I would do the buff if it's that big of an issue. I don't see why the buff, the small buffs are. Uh, I think there are there are only two units in the in the game that I would nerf. One is Skeleton Magi, not even not even Baron himself, just the Skeleton Magi in general. Um, and I'd maybe nerf Safe Pilot. Um, and the nerf that I'd do to Safe Pilot would be that you don't get the double damage from the stealth hit. Yeah, that would be the that would, that would be the nerf that I'd make. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? It's like if you buff one unit, you nerf another. Another one gets nerfed, but if you nerf one, all the other ones get buffed. Because, like, if you, th I think you you have to balance uh, around uh, play play rate. Mm -hmm. I don't think you do. You do. every single unit should be. Uh, I don't think every single unit should be like exactly the same uh, percentage play rate. Which I don't know what that percentage 
percentage uh, is. But uh, I think they should be closer. And like having a, a me that is like in uh, 70% of games or decks, it doesn't make sense. Why? It's too high. It's too, it's too, it's too high. I, I agree with you. And I, I think like, you know, I remember it's actually less common now. I think I think this this map has made Baron less oppressive because it's easier to kind of deal with the skeleton mage at one at, all, all at one time. Um, but I remember in Alterac Valley when I was grinding sort of between 2k and 4k, 70% of my matches were versus Barons because like Baron was just so oppressive on that map. And I think Baron is a little easier to deal with this on map, but he's still very high tier. Bloody hell, I just kind of burped in the middle of the sentence there. Um, Baron was obviously very oppressive on... Um, on Alter Act Valley, he's still good on Arathi Basin, but I think people are just at this point in time trying new things out. It might be that in two weeks we just start to see Baron become obnoxious again, but no, I, we'll, well, we'll, I think we'll see. I think rocket towers are going to make Baron worse, and I think mm, yeah, the because the uh, rockets do hit the skeletal mages before they lock onto your base. And yes. uh, Skeletal Mage just sucks, actually, because they are going to draw aggro from a tower and then the, it's going to hit some other stuff that is around. And plus, yeah. we are losing fortification afterwards, which is going to make that, that left base easier to pick, which is going to make Baron worse as well. So I'm not scared about Baron that much. And I've actually won a lot of games against Baron. I, I've actually won quite a few games. I've actually won more games than not against Baron um, from various other lists this this um, this season. So, yeah, I'm wondering whether Baron actually... But then, you know, is that just reinforcing Blizzard's policy? Like, that's the funny thing. Like, is that just reinforcing Blizzard's policy? The fact that Baron maybe has become... People were complaining about Baron so much until Season 2. And now if Baron is becoming less popular and actually less useful and less impactful, is that not just reinforcing Blizzard's policy of, well, do we need to change things? <laughs> yeah, but uh, safe makes it... So you said it yourself. Safe makes it so Necromancer isn't played. Chimera can not really be played. Uh, so many different units are just unplayable because of safe. So I, I agree. I I, hunt, I do, by the way, one hundred percent agree with you. I'm playing devil's advocate to the sense that yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. One one balance issue has maybe been fixed with a new map. Who's to say that other balance issues with other maps or other but modifiers wouldn't get changed? You know, having small buffs makes the makes the game feel like it has an expansion. Yeah, because like there's new units. It's like oh new oh what I can play Angry Chicken Army. What? That's crazy. Let's try to make a deck around that. You know. So I just that's why I'm saying mid season. Just do it mid season. Yeah. yeah. Because sure. you can you're gonna have some time to actually um, check how the meta goes. Because right now you're right. Baron is not probably not gonna be as bad. There's some stuff that are better. Some stuff are worse. So maybe you don't balance change because a new map changes everything. And then you're going to get a new tower. And then it would be like one week after that, that you would do some small balance. So small balance changes, like very small balance changes. Yeah. I think like... Mountaineer. Come on. Yeah, Mountaineer, dude. Like Mountaineer, the poor, the poor chap. He's six gold and useless for most people. Um, but look, look there's, there's there's plenty that we can say about balance changes. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure we'll come. We'll, I'm sure we'll come back and revisit that in the future. Make sure to um, tell us your thoughts, guys, down below. Um, yeah. I want to know if I'm wrong. <laughs> Please, please no i mean like, there's, there's different perspectives that we can look at ultimately right but i think um, that's a mistake that's all I'm i think that's a mistake on blizzard's part um and uh yeah that's it i'm not i'm not i don't want i'm not hating on them i'm just saying like i wish this would change is what i'm saying and you're entitled to have that that wish <laughs> because you are a player um you're a, a very dedicated player and you know i think that's perfectly entitled for you to kind of kind of have that well i've heard a lot of people that, um, saying that too so that's why i'm sharing this thought yeah yeah 100 percent. and i think that i think it, i think it is a commonly held um kind of like thought uh for the game but like you know ultimately guys um that kind of brings our podcast to a close the next one probably will come out we have to film it before the end of this week so what i'm going to say is the next podcast i'm going to challenge us more positive discussion points than negative because obviously we um we, we like to bring up and, and tackle community issues, which are, are usually generally, generally community issues generally tend to be negative in, in inverted commas. They're things that people would like to see changed or discussed. 
Um, on my side, it was positive. Yeah, your side was positive. <laughs> let's go for more scoundrel side positive this time. And we'll, 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 <laughs> no, we'll try and have a... I'm, um, I'm not throwing we'll you under the bus. Like a, uh, a sort of a, a celebration of Rumble, I think, on the next podcast episode. That would yeah. be quite nice because um, the game, despite it everything is, that you hear, yeah. Yeah, the game is great. The game is fantastic. And there is a reason that we're still playing it and creating content on it that we find it yeah, really fun to engage with. So, we love yeah, this exactly. game. All right. Um, but yeah, that, that battle brings it to a close, guys. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And um, it's been a long episode this week. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the uh, on the discussion. I've been a scoundrel, obviously joined by Big Math. I'll put all of his links in the description below as per usual. Uh, and you guys can catch up the catch the first half of this podcast if you haven't watched it on Big Math's channel too. So thank you so much, guys. We'll see you soon.